This is KGW News at Sunrise. But these people are expected to do one job, and then here we are, and they are forced into these positions that they're not trained for. That is a Portland teacher talking about the Portland Public School District strategy to continue educating kids while teachers are on strike. We're going to have more on the district's plan for students coming up in one of our top stories. And Oregon's lawmakers will be in Beaverton today as the city breaks ground on its first year-round homeless shelter. The details, including when it opens, coming up in just about five minutes. And we're also talking about Brussels sprouts today. But cheesy. It's I like cheesy Brussels sprouts. Brussels. Well, it is a cheesy Brussels sprouts casserole rod. It's one of our <laughs> recipes from last year's viewer recipe series leading up to Thanksgiving. We're going to have details on how you can get on board with this year's segment. And we're also going to take a look back at some of our all time favorites coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, happy Friday morning to you. A, yeah. The best way to start off a video of food. I love yeah, it. I'm a little hungry on this Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what's going on weather wise though this Friday, Rod? Uh, this is the dry window of the next bunch of days. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy well this morning. <laughs> enjoy early to mid afternoon because after that, all bets are off for any extended periods of dry weather. We'll break down this incoming batch of rain. Boy, it sure shows up clearly on the satellite picture, doesn't it? There are a few traces of rain scattered about mostly on the east side this morning. We have some fog pockets with broken cloudiness over the Willamette Valley to begin your day. We're at 48, still pretty comfortable outside. Here's your day moving forward. Dry at lunchtime, 58. Dry in the mid afternoon. Most of the modeling is now saying we could have raindrops at 5 p.m. And the big story here is if you have plans for tonight, this evening, it will be raining. Here's Chris McGinnis. Yeah, I have plans to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get you out the door and we'll take you to eastbound 84. Photojournalist Chad Dehart manning the wheel of drive eight heading out onto the Banfield. Traffic still in pretty good shape on that side of town as it is on the west side, Highway 26. Hey, let's take you to the west side real quick. Have a big TriMet alert for the weekend. The max blue and red line will be disrupted all day on Sunday because of a an emergency preparedness drill. The TriMet is doing at the Washington Park Station. The Washington Park Station will be closed all day. Shuttle buses will serve stops from Beaverton Transit Center to Providence Park. That's kind of big because, of course, the Thorns are home uh, on Sunday as well. The Max Red Line will run from Gateway Transit Center to PDX only. And again, this is because of that emergency preparedness drill that's required by law uh, in the Robertson Tunnel. That's the uh, the 250 foot deep tunnel beneath uh, the Washington uh, Park max station. So all other trains and uh, shuttles will run on Sunday schedules. Just know this, that if you are using the blue and red line, it'll take 15 to 30 minutes extra to get through that disrupted area near Washington Park on Sunday. Guys, thanks for keeping tabs on all that, Chris. A new strike in Oregon begins in just a few hours. Yamhill County workers plan to walk off the job at 10 a.m. because of failed contract negotiations. Our Devin Haskins joins us live from the newsroom. And Devin, this strike may affect important services for thousands of people living in Yamhill County. Yeah, when those workers hit the picket lines this morning, it have an impact across a number of Yamhill County services, and those include the health department, public works, and even mental health services. The county telling KGW, though, they're committed to ensuring the continuation of critical services during the strike. The negotiations between Yamhill County and the union representing these workers have been going on since March. And like recent strikes around the area, these workers say they want higher pay, among some other requests. They say it's because of general inflation and an increased cost of living in Yamhill County. The union wants a 15% wage increase over the next three years. The county countered that proposal with three different offers, ranging each from 10 to 14%. It's hard to pay our rent or pay certain bills, and we have to decide whether we're going to pay this bill or pay for gas or groceries, and it's really, really difficult. They wanted to know what our bottom line was. We gave them what our bottom line was, and there was no way, nowhere to move. We, weren't, we didn't feel like we were asking for too much. Yamhill County officials turned down our request for an interview, but offered a statement by email, and it says, in part, we are disappointed we could not come to an agreement. The county feels strongly that we have made good faith proposals in hope of moving closer to an agreement and averting a strike. However, county proposals were rejected by the union. The next mediation session scheduled for Tuesday, though either side can propose a meeting again before that. Drew? All right, that's Devin Haskins reporting on the latest from Yamhill County. Meanwhile, Portland's first ever teacher strike is entering its third day. The Portland Public School District and the Teachers Union are set to return to the bargaining table later today. 
So while they continue to negotiate a new contract with teachers, the district is asking teachers assistants, paraeducators, and librarians to step up and help fill the gap for kids who are missing class time. We spoke to a paraeducator about this and they told us they felt overwhelmed by the added responsibilities, saying they don't feel like they have the skills necessary to help students and they don't want to be used as a wedge between the district and teachers. I am extremely overwhelmed and uncomfortable. It felt like I needed to have prerequisite classes in order to understand the concepts. So KGW learned that the school district sent packets to paraeducators, teaching assistants, and librarian assistants. Those packets are hundreds of pages long, detailing how they should help students starting this Monday. The district says it's not asking these workers to teach kids. They say it's asking them to coach kids to help ensure that they don't fall behind during the strike. Meantime, officials at Blanchet House in Northwest Portland are hoping PPS families will volunteer while kids are out of class during the strike. The nonprofit provides wraparound services to people struggling with homelessness and addiction. Kids 13 and younger can help make sack lunches, assemble care kits, and collect bottles and cans. Older students can help serve meals in the Blanchet House Cafe. For more information about volunteer opportunities, visit BlanchetHouse.org. And hey, stay with KGW for continuing coverage of the Portland Public Schools teacher strike. You can find regular updates here on air and online at KGW.com and on the KGW app. Later today, Oregon Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici and Senators Jeff Merkley and Ron Wyden will be in Beaverton as crews break ground on the city's first year-round homeless shelter. So this facility is located in southwest Beaverton, just off Hillsdale Highway. It can house up to 60 people while providing them with three meals a day, showers, laundry, and support services. This 12,000 square foot property is set to open next year and is located near public transit, service providers, and employment opportunities. This project is being funded by the Supportive Housing Services measure, which was approved by Washington County voters. And daylight saving time ends this weekend. It'll get darker earlier and some people will struggle with what's known as the winter blues. So we asked a local doctor what can help. Paul Geiger practices medicine at Providence. He says the time change can take our bodies out of natural rhythm and can create more stress. His advice, get ample and regular sleep. So that would be like, you know, getting up at the same time every day. Uh, tr trying to go to bed at the same time uh, as well, but but getting up is the real key thing. You you know the the best sleep medicine is a busy day. You know, and if you've got a sixteen hour busy day, you're more likely to get good sleep. Huh? Yeah. I'm really tired when I have a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what he's saying. Okay. All right. So other things that help avoid caffeine later in the day and skip the strenuous workouts close to bedtime. Dr. Geiger also suggests 30 minutes of exposure to daylight first thing in the morning. All solid advice for sure. Well, good thing he didn't say, he said daylight, not sunshine. So that makes that part easier for I us. Would argue, <laughs> I would argue that the best sleep medicine is not going to work and staying in bed <laughs> and continuing to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that make sense? that's not wrong. Give that a try. Uh, by the way, it will be, uh, the sun goes down about seven minutes or so before uh, 5 p.m. on, on Sunday. Uh, Sunday. So, yeah, that's, you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday, you'll be going, hmm, starting to get a little dark out here. Mm. Rainy season starts November 1st. Dark season starts this week. Uh, yeah. Hey, we did this yesterday in Sunrise. I hope you got to see it. Text the word winter to 503-226-5088, and that will shoot the link to my winter outlook on your phone. Honestly, I'm not sure. We did several versions, and the one that's most popular in terms of views is the 24-minute version that Drew and I did together, where Drew's asking me questions, and we really got into explaining why I came to every single conclusion. So that's my winter outlook. Hopefully, we'll, you will find that interesting if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, let's talk about what's going on. This is our next rainmaker. Duh, right? <laughs> Looks impressive on the satellite picture. So we're dry this this morning we're dry into the afternoon this will be the longest extended dry period that we have potentially until next Wednesday or Thursday so uh, take advantage here's the way it looks on futurecast three o'clock this afternoon now we've pretty high confidence we've got rain by mid-afternoon at the coast the question is exactly when does this move into Portland so this is 3 p.m. 
Most of the modeling that was showing more like seven is now showing we're wet by five. So uh, late afternoon, start looking for the darkening clouds and the rain coming into Salem, Portland, up into Longview. But this is widespread hours of steady rain. So there's a very, very wet Friday evening. And this does show some embedded heavier rain pockets as well. Here's the surface front tomorrow morning. This would be like, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, it's really raining outside. Uh, that was my jackhammer imitation. <laughs> and then behind the front, look at these scattered heavy rain pockets. There's actually a thunder chance tomorrow. And we think this will be more of those breezy south winds. Could be some gusts at the beach to 40 or better during the day tomorrow. We could have some gusts easily to about 30 or so during the day tomorrow here in the Willamette Valley. Right now we have more clouds than anything, but there are breaks. There are some fog pockets. PDX is at 47 degrees. Uh, another pretty mild morning, though. Look at the 53 in Salem, the 54 in Newport, the 45 in Bend, the 53 out in Pendleton. Forecast numbers for the coast. Again, by mid-afternoon, it should be raining. Light winds today. Those winds will become breezy and pick up overnight tonight and then stay breezy to gusty during the day tomorrow. Salem 59, Corvallis 60. Should be a little bit warmer up into southwest Washington because you folks will be dry a little bit longer uh, before the rain kicks in. Seven day, I mean it is the rainy season. Basically rain at times, if you will, all the way through Wednesday. I was telling you Sunday morning would be dry. It looks like I was wrong. There could be a couple decent shots of rain, including Sunday morning. Mr. Carney.